All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the O-ring, the two O-rings that are on the expansion tank for a E46 BMW. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is loosen these two bolts right here, two 10 millimeters. And then next, you're gonna to wanna to take apart this whole air box and take it completely off. And to do that, there's clip right here, clip right here. There's a clip right here, which I already done. I already took off. And then there is another clip right here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right in there. And if you just get a screwdriver, it pops right off, and you can see the clip is right here, just sitting there. And then there's a couple more you have to take off after that. These ones are kind of difficult, but it helps if you take your hand from here, reach it around. If you can see where my hand is, right there, look that up, there's, that, there's a clip right there. And then the only other clip is down right there, right next to the steering fluid. And then you can just start wiggling this apart so it ends up breaking right there let's take out the math it should just pop right out now that you have that out just set that aside and then the next thing you're going to want to do is remove this. Like I said, there's two bolts right here. Just take them out, put them somewhere safe. And now when you have that out, just take this out, comes literally right out, and then just put that aside as well. So now you can see that there's more, you can see that for the expansion tank right here, there's this hose right here, which you're gonna have to take off. It's right, it's kinda hard to see, it's right down here. And the next one you're gonna have to take off is this one. And there's a little clip right there. But before we take that off, just make sure your radiator, well, your, your expansion tank is actually drained. Um, and I'll put that in down there. So the next part is what you're gonna do is you wanna, you wanna come under the car and find where the expansion tank reservoir is. So it's right here. And this is the one that we want to unscrew. There is this one right here is for the radiator. We don't want to do the radiator. We only want to do the expansion tank. But this is on, this is on a manual car and I know on the automatic car it looks a little different but you should still have the same thing. And instead of using a screw to undo this, use a fender washer, a really big wash that fits in there snug because if you don't, you'll end up with something like that where it's a little stripped out and it doesn't look so nice. So use one of these. And this is just going to drain all of the fluid that is currently in the system only from the expansion tank and it's actually not going to come out all the way it's going to just stay in there you can take it out all the way but I wouldn't recommend it so just keep going and just let all the antifreeze fall out and as you can see it's pouring out and I'm just using a bucket to catch it. So next what you want to do is after it's all drained out, you want to take this and pull it. It just sits like that. And the next thing you can do if you want is you can remove the sensor. Not the actual sensor, but you can remove the cable. I actually like to leave it in until I pull it up and then I can pull it with two hands so I don't, so I don't break it. But the next thing to do is remove the hoses up top. So now you want to come up back to the top of the car where the expansion tank is. And there's just this little tab right here that just tells you how full the, the expansion tank is. And just pull it off. It just comes off just like that and set it aside. And then the next thing you want to do is there's a clip here, here, and right down there if you can see it yeah you should be able to see it 
And to take those off, it's pretty simple. All you do is take a screwdriver right in here and pop it up just like that. Now you don't have to remove them, you can just leave them sitting like that. And it's kind of hard to do on camera, so I'll be back with them out. So now that you have those clips out, what you want to do is try to pull out this one and this one where you just took the tabs off. This one comes out pretty easy. All I did was I had I held this, I held the expansion tank and pulled on it, and this cable came right out. And it while you're in here, just inspect the O-rings and see what they look like. This O-ring it will actually be the same as the bottom one, and I'll have links in the description for both of them where you can buy them. And then this one is kind of difficult to take out. I kind of pulled on the expansion tank a little and it kind of rocks forward. And then you really have to just get something in there. Don't use a screwdriver. I wouldn't recommend putting a screwdriver in there. What I would recommend is a plastic piece, something plastic, like a plastic pry tool, stick it right in between and try to pull it apart. And if you really can't do it, I would just get two hands on both sides and just try to wiggle it back and forth and it will come out. So to actually get the expansion tank up, I ended up having to take this clip out that was just sitting here. All you do is just wiggle it from side to side. And to actually get this out, the easiest way, what I found, is to take a wooden dowel, something really soft. So I took a wooden dowel right up in here and took a hammer on the other side and hit it. While someone up top is wiggling, up, wiggling that and it comes right off. I found that's the easiest way to do it. Now to take the actual expansion tank out, it sits in a little track right here and if you just pull out on it, you can see, and it just wiggles its way up. Just pull it all the way up through here and it's gonna still leak fluid. And it just pulls up like that. And just watch out for, it's gonna leak more fluid. So when you take it up, take out the expansion tank and you flip it over, you'll see the two o-rings and I just used almost like a dental tool to just pull them out and they just pop out they do take a little they're very tight in there and some of them may be burnt or even broken but if you just pull it out like that and then for replacements these are the two replacements that I have this one is 38 by 4 inner diameter and this one is 22 by 3.5 inner diameter and I'll have links for both of these in the video and an important note is to clean this, run water through it when you're before you put new O-rings in it, and make sure it's clean thoroughly where in there, and make sure there's no junk or debris in inside here because it might screw up the seal. And as you can see, these are the old ones. They kind of look goopy and all like gross, and that's what they're gonna look like. And you can actually see that there's stuff on it, and that's what could be breaking the seal right there. So use some silicone grease inside of where the O-rings are gonna go for the O-rings to go in easy and make a good seal. And as you can see, they just slot right in. There's only one slot for them to go in. They're kind of tricky to get in, but these are the right sizes and they will go in. And that's what it should look like when it's done. It's pretty deep in there and just put a little more silicone grease on when you're done. So to put it back in, it comes out the same way it came out. You just kind of have to wiggle it down and it just only sits in one way. Just make sure that notch right there is going in and is lined up. And just kind of move the hoses out of the way. You're not going to break them. They're very flexible. And it's just, once it's down there, you'll hear it click. And you might get hung up right here where it's getting hung up right now. You just kind of have to move that and put it under. And then it will sit in like that, and all you have to do is just wiggle it back in, line this part up, and it just kinda just sits in like that. You can see that only sits in one way. You just push down on it, and check under the car, make sure it's lined up after, and just wiggle it into place, and it will fall into place. So now come to down here where this clip is, and just put this clip back. Don't push it all the way in yet, like it goes like that, but leave it out until you're 100% sure that this gap is fine and there's nothing in it. And while you're down here, you can plug this cable back in. 
Just make sure there's no antifreeze or anything that got in it. And it just pushes right in like, like that. Just like that. And make sure that it is clipped in, make sure it doesn't come out. And then while you're down here, you can tighten this up. And again, to, when it's tight, don't make sure it's, don't do it too tight. Don't use a screwdriver, use a fender washer like those showed in the beginning of the video. And then lastly, just make sure this is this is down here. But as you can see right here, there's still a little gap, so it does need to be pushed down. And for someone from the top, just push down on it while someone is down here checking it and just wiggle it and make sure it's in place until it gets in. So once it's the expansion tank is pushed into place, if, it, if to make sure that the gap is closed all the way and you're getting a nice tight seal, what we did is we took a piece of wood right here, had someone down there under the car supporting the actual expansion tank and just took a hammer and hit it. And what it's doing is it's shocking it into place. And once that's done, you can start putting these back in. They just push in and right here, Eddie did this one. All you do is just push in on it and push this clip down. Same thing for up here. The, hard, the tricky part with these two is you have to make sure they go in together else they won't go in and just keep pushing, keep pushing. And once they're in, just push these down, push these down, make sure they have a seal. And after that, just make sure that the cable back down there is plugged in and you can close the drain port. So after you have everything back together, just make sure everything is put together. Make sure that the drain port's shut. Make sure that these are all put back and the seal is good. Check this one and check the two down ones and check these. And then when you're done with that, you're gonna start filling. So what I did is I just used the funnel and used the fluid that was already in here since it was fine. Just poured it back into here until this was up here. And now what you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna have to bleed the system because there's air pockets in it. So make sure, it's, make sure it's full, make sure it's like this and open this all the way. And what I would recommend is replacing this. I ended up buying a brass one with a new seal on it right here that I'm gonna put in. And again, to remove this, use a fen big fender washer because you, as you can see, this one's all beat up. So what I like to do is I like to actually get some fluid down in this hole. So I start up the car, make sure the heat's up all the way, make sure the fan's up all the way, and make sure that, watch this level because it will rise or fall depending on if there's air in it or not. So just watch out for more liquid coming out of here and then start putting some in here and just make sure it doesn't get too low because if it does get too low when there's no antifreeze in it, it can be very bad. So start bleeding your system, make sure that there's no air pockets and you should be all set to go. Once the, once the car's all burped, you can shut it off and just start putting everything back together. As you can see, the level's up all the way and I replaced that with a brass one and it will make your life a lot easier and should be all set to go, no more leaks. The links for everything should be in the description and just put this back together, just the reverse of what you did and you're all done. See you in the next one, bye.